Good morning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in today um, as we continue exploring solving equations. Just uh, let me remind you, we do have our final exam on June 12th. It'll be it's next Friday, so make sure you're ready for it. I will be assigning a study guide or two next week and to help you guys get ready. And the test is just going to cover the stuff we've done the last few weeks, so you're going to want to make sure you've finished all of the IXLs. If you're not sure if you finished it, just go through each day since the last test and just check that you finished it to 80. I will be updating grades soon um, for IXL. I do have a lot, but so just give me be a little patient with it. It is coming soon, though. So let's jump into this assignment for today, though. So we're going to introduce a new idea that, um, with algebra here called combining like terms. So what we're going to do is these different terms that have x in it like this, we can actually combine them together into one. So this is, and when you hear me use the word term, well, this is a term this is a term, and this is a term. And what I'm saying is term, let me write it out. So each one of those is a term. You're just going to hear me say that, so that's why I'm bringing it up. These are considered like terms. They're alike since they both have an x in it. Since they both have an x in it, well, we have 11x. Minus 4x is equal to 14. So what we can do is use something called the distributive property, which you might remember from earlier this year. And we could actually rewrite this left side like this. And now all we have to do is 11 minus 4. 7x is equal to 14. Or in other words, we just did 11 minus 4, and that gave us 7. So we have 7 times x is equal to 14. And then from here, you just solve it like the other IXLs we did this week. To get rid of this 7 over here, we need to divide it away. Divide both sides by that 7. So... 7 divided by 7 is 1, so that goes away. And this will leave us with just an x on the left side, just an x. That's all that's left. And then on the right side, we have 14 divided by 7, which is 2. So your final answer is x is equal to 2. Let's do another. Okay, so we're going to combine our like terms here. This is a B in it, and this is a B in it. Oops. So what we're going to do, we're going to write this like this. I'm going to do 13 minus 9. B is equal to 16. And 13 minus 9 is just 4. So 4B is equal to 16. And we want, it, we want B all by itself. So to get it all by itself, we need to get rid of this 4 here. So to get rid of that 4... Divide it away so that these cancel out. So 4 divided by 4 is just 1. And we do the same thing to the right side. So now this gives us B is equal to 16 divided by 4, or 4. So this is our final answer here. This is B. Okay, so let's 
do another. 3C minus C is 20. So again, you, this is like doing 3, and then we're, I know there's no number here, but remember this is really, 1C is really the same thing as just C. So we can say this is 3 minus 1 times C is equal to 20. This is our variable. 3 minus 1 is 2. So it's 2 times C is equal to 20. Now we want to get C all by itself. So we divide the 2 away. And this will give us 2 divided by 2 is 1. So these cancel out. Gives us just C on the left. 20 divided by 2 is 10. So our final answer is C is equal to 10. And let me show you real quick that you can also test out your answer. So we had 3 times C minus C is equal to 20. If we did this right, we should be able to just plug in this 10 here for C, for both C's, and get the same thing. So let's try it out. 3 times 10 minus 10. All right, that's what C is. So is this equal to 20? Let's check. So we did 3 times 10, which we know is 30. So 30 minus 10 is equal to 20. So we, that must be right. And you can see that this little trick here I did works. Because right? C just has to be 10. So what we did is we combined like terms. And then we solved a one step equation. Okay, so let's see if I can skip ahead. Here we go, it's a little harder, actually quite a bit harder. So this is actually the same thing though, same idea. We're going to, we see that each term here has a U in it. That means that we can add up all these terms together. So we have 20 plus 3. These numbers I'm writing here, this is actually called, these are called coefficients. So it's another, another vocab word. So we're taking all the coefficients and adding them up and then multiplying the sum times this u. And we know that this must be equal to 8. So I think the easiest way is to break this into pieces. Let's look at this here. So let's see, I have 20 plus 3 plus 4. I know 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 20 must be 27. But then we have minus 25 plus 2 still. And still equal to 8. So let's look for another piece here. Um, let's see. I know 27 minus 25. Oh, I know that would be equal to 2, right? So let's see. We, got, we said this was equal to 27. And then we'll say we know 27 minus 25 is 2. So we have 2, and then we still have this plus 2 times u is equal to 8. And then from here, 2 plus 2 is 4. So we have 4 times u 
is equal to 8. And then from here, it's just a one-step equation, just like we've done this week. So you divide this side by 4. Divide the right side by 4 as well so it stays balanced. These cancel out. And then this will give us... Just u is left over. This is all that's left, right? So that's just u is equal to 8 divided by 4, 2. So u is equal to 2. You could plug it in for each u here, but that'll take a long time. So I'm not going to do that for, for this video. But if you did, you would see that it worked. All right, um, I'll do one more example here. Yeah, let's do one like this. So this one's a little bit different. Not necessarily harder, but it's just different. So this one, we see that we have these, these terms both have a P in it. Okay, but this this two doesn't have one. That means that we can only co combine together these two terms because this term's not like these ones. All right, because p is some number, so this is eight times something. This is seven times something. All right, so we don't. This, these are different numbers here, so we can't just can't just add two with it. So this is going to give us. So we have 8p minus 7p plus 2 is equal to 10. Now we know 8 minus 7 is just 1, but let me kind of write that out. Just like how I have been. So we have 8 minus 7 times p plus 2 is equal to 10. And then 8 minus 7 is just 1. So we have 1 times p plus 2 is equal to 10. Right? 8 minus 7 is just 1. That's what I have here. So this is just 1. And then 1 times p is just p. So we can actually simplify this. 1 times p is just p. So we have p plus 2 is equal to 10. And then from here, it's a one-step equation. But for this one, all right, we're adding 2. So to get rid of this 2, we need to subtract it away. From both sides. So we need minus 2, minus 2. So do one thing to the left side of the equation, you have to do the same thing to the right. So since 2 minus 2 is 0, these go away. And it leaves us with just p is equal to 10 minus 2, or 8. So p is equal to 8. And that's how you solve these. So again, really the only difference with this one versus the others is that this term, it didn't have a p. If it did, you would add up everything together, but it doesn't. So we had to worry, or we had to combine these together. That's what we did first, okay? So you combine your like terms, and then you solve it. Let's see, maybe, can I get one more like that? We'll do one last one, actually. All right, so again, um, look for which terms are alike. So this one is a P, this one is a P, and then 
this one is a P. And then we have this plus one here, which is a different, it doesn't have a P, so it's not a like term. So this means that we're gonna we're gonna work with these first. So we have eight minus seven plus five. So I'm just adding up the coefficients here. And then we have times p. And then we know we still had that plus one, right? We know this is equal to 13. So we're going to do 8 minus 7 is 1. Right, this is 1. And we know that 1 plus 5 is 6. So this is going to give us 6 times P. Plus 1. And we still have that plus one there. He's green. And we know this is equal to thirteen. So we could just really we could rewrite this as six p. And then we have plus one, but we want to get rid of that. So Again, um, you would subtract this away. And then we'd subtract one away from the other side. And just for right now, I want to note, we are in the challenge zone. This is actually a two-step equation. So this might be pretty tricky. But if you're feeling daring, if you want to get ahead, you can go ahead and give this a try. So we're doing 1 minus 1, which is 0. On the right side, we did minus 1. That gave us 12. Let's see. We have 6p here. So this will give us 6 times p is equal to 12. And then from there, oh, we just divide both sides by 2. not by 2, by 6, right, because we want to get rid of this. So. Dividing, by, dividing by 2 wouldn't help very much. So these will cancel out. But we have to do the same thing to the right side. And this will give us, drum roll please, P, right, just P is all, all that's left here on the left. And then... Let me move this a little. There we go. P and then 12 divided by 6 is 2. So we put 2 over here. Oh, we know that our final answer, P, is equal to 2. So this would be an example of something called a two-step equation, which is something we'll work more on in 7th grade. But again, you, you do have the tools to solve something like this. So... That is all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully you guys are getting through the work all right. Remember, you can always reach out to me if you're having a hard time. If you want to schedule a live session, something like that. I'm always willing to work with you guys. I'll find a time in my schedule um, to meet with you, even if it's just for a little bit. Or you just want me to take a look at some of your work or something. Just just talk to me. You, know, you guys know I'm willing to help you out, so don't be afraid to talk to me. <laughs> Please take care, though. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.